Did you ever wonder what God thinks about you? Well, stay tuned on today's Move Your Mountain. You're going to find out exactly how God feels about you. We're also going to have some inspiring music. We're going to take Holy Communion together. And then we're going to pray over all of your prayer requests. So you don't want to miss today's program. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. Welcome, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today. I believe you are in for just an inspiring time as we get into the Lord's presence today. I'm Pastor Gary, here with Pastor Myra, Pastor John, and Pastor Rebecca, and it is great to be together, isn't it? It is, and we are so glad that you are here with us today. We are looking forward to what God is going to do amongst us, how he's going to move. I love, there's always that unexpected, because we're not pre-script. We don't know what we're going to talk about. About here, but we do know that the Holy Spirit is here, and when He's here, some great things will happen. So get prepared today. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And you know, we're, we're, if I'm not mistaken, it's two or three are gathered. We've we've exceeded that. We've got four. <laughs> we've got four today. Uh -huh. And so, whatever need you have, what whatever is on your right. heart, even as Pastor Gary, you know, teased at the beginning of the program. What you're thinking God thinks about you, I'm believing that there's going to be an amazing yeah. breakthrough yeah. in your life. And so I just can't wait. Yeah, expect God to do it today in your life. Expect him to move on your behalf because of his spirit, his presence among us. I'm excited about that. <laughs> yes. Amen. Amen. Well, remember, we do have prayer partners available. They are waiting to pray for you. 888 Six six five four four eight three. If anything is on your heart, or if there's anything we're going to discuss today, call that number. Someone yep. will agree with you in prayer. Yeah. And then remember, get your communion elements: a cracker, a piece of bread, some juice in a cup, so that when we partake together at the Lord's table, you can join in. You don't want to miss that. Amen. Well, one of my favorite Psalms, I love this Psalm, Psalm 16, starting there in verse 1, says, Preserve me, O God, for in you I put my trust. O my soul, you have said to the Lord, you are my goodness, and it is nothing apart from you. And as for the saints who are on the earth, they are the excellent ones in whom is all my delight. Now, I have a pretty strong feeling there's a lot of Christians that don't know that God delights in us as Christians yeah that he thinks about us the way that verse describes it. And I just want to say to you today, if you've got some wrong images, some false images, mm -hmm. we were talking about how sometimes our, we get our, our, our image of our heavenly father from our earthly father or from how other people have treated us. Mm -hmm. But I want you to know you need to see yourself like the Lord sees you. And number one, the first point, you need to get this, the Lord, he delights in you. Yeah, I think, Pastor Gary, that a lot of times we as believers, because we don't esteem ourselves like we should, and we should, because even Jesus said in Matthew 22, he said, love your neighbor, how? As you that's, do yourself. That's good, that's good as you do yourself. So we have to change our perspective. We have to change how we look at God, how we look at ourselves, how we look at other believers. I thought about an old, old 
poem, it said, uh, to live above with saints we love, oh, it will be glory. To live below with saints we know, <laughs> it's quite a different story. <laughs> but if we delight in, as God delights in us, we delight in one another, understanding. We delight in you. You're watching today. We delight in you that we are in this together and God has put worth on us. He gave his only begotten son, yep. putting worth on us, delight in the Lord. He delights in you. Yes. We have a good life. Yeah. Amen. yeah. And I think that's something that a lot of times I encounter a lot of people who have a, have a faulty uh, framework of who God is, uh, not just from the perspective of, I love how you said that, Pastor Gary, because a lot of people we do uh, see God through the lens of our earthly father or our earthly circumstances. Mm -hmm. But I also notice people too that think, well, God didn't do this for me or God let me down here. And I love how you brought up, Pastor Myra, the fact that he has already paid the highest price for you right. that could be paid. I remember a young man um, who uh, attends our church came up to me one day and he, he had grown up in Christianity. And I had said something in the message the one time uh, that, that it was essentially, you are worth nothing less than the life of a king. And he came up to me afterward and he said, I'd never heard it put that way. And that just struck me as so much because here's the thing. When you understand the inherent value in a thing, mm -hmm. you will treat it in a way commensurate with that inherent value. And, and so if someone was to give you a Rolls Royce or a Lamborghini, you would never take that off roading in the woods or driving it through rivers and, and, and mud piles and uh, smashing it through all the potholes here in the city of Pittsburgh. If, if, if you live here where we live and, and and in the same way, we do that with our own lives. We don't understand the inherent value of the price that is paid for us through Jesus Christ. And so we take and we allow certain things to happen to us or we, we even run ourselves through the muck of sin and just living below the standard that we are called to as saints of God. And that's why we need to be reminded God delights in you. His delight is in you. You make the Father smile. And some of you might be saying, well, how can I make the Father smile? Look at the sin in my life. Look at all the areas where I failed him. Do you understand that Jesus took all of your failures, all of your sins, all of your deficiencies, and allowed them to be nailed with him to the cross so that his Father's delight could arise in you? And Pastor Rebecca, I think it's high time for people all across this land, especially believers, those who are saints, but those who have not yet come to God to realize that the Father's delight is in them because of what the Son has done on our behalf. Yeah, and I love how you brought that even about, you know, we're worth the value, our value is mm. in the king, you know, because Jesus did that for us. And I yeah. think that if, as Christians, as believers, if we would begin to see that and visualize that and understand that, what value we have in us, mm. we wouldn't so make good. some of the decisions that we've made. Well. We wouldn't continue to make some of the bad choices yeah. that we make because we would see that God loves us so much. He gave is everything. So we should do that same thing and give him everything that we have, everything that we desire, mm. all our dreams, all our ambitions. We should line it up to God. God, what do you want for me? You gave me everything. So the least that I could do is give you my life. Mm -hmm. And as we do that as Christians, as we do that as God's children, he does take delight in us because he's saying, wow, you are actually following me. You're doing what I desire you to do. And when he, we do that, he blesses us. When we have that walk of faith and we walk in the ways that God wants us to, he doesn't have any other option but to bless us because he desires that. He loves to bless his kids. You know, I even think about the very one who was writing the Psalms. You know, when you think of David and all the things that he had gone through in his life, oh, if anybody should stand there and say, God, I, I don't deserve this. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know why you would ever love me. And he probably did felt that way, feel that way. But he also recognized who God was. Yes. He was his protector. He was the one who saved him from the pits of hell. He saved him from every enemy that would come in his direction. He had a God who delighted in him yes. just like you do. Yes. So if you are struggling with something right now, you give it over to God. Say, Lord, you see mm -hmm. where the position that I am in right now. And you know, I don't want to be here. You know, I want to be where you want me to be. Help me to follow you. Help me to make the right moves to follow you in the way that I should so that you can once again, take delight in me so that I can make you proud. That's what we should all desire as his children to make him proud. Yeah. 
We all know that scripture, delight yourself yes. in the Lord and he'll grant you the desires of your heart. Yeah. But this says the Lord delights himself in you. Think about that. He delights not because you've earned it, not because you deserve it, not because you've done anything. He just loves spending time yes. with you. It's like a father who just loves when his children come. They're not asking for anything. They don't need anything. They just want to hang with their daddy. Mm -hmm. And you have a heavenly father who says you are his excellent one. Mm -hmm. Think about that. You're his excellent one. I, I think that just should just mm -hmm. should just blow that stinking thinking <laughs> out of your life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you are his excellent one because even when those failures do come up, he's not looking at you. He's looking at Jesus. He is looking at his beloved son. And Romans 8, 32, one of my favorite verses of scripture says, and if he did not withhold Jesus from us, how will he not also along with Jesus? He already gave us his best, but he will also give us graciously all things. And so right now, wherever you're sitting, mm -hmm. like Pastor Gary said, let the delight of God, like a strong and mighty wind, blow all of that stinking thinking away. Mm -hmm. Let it just blow all of those ideas of failure, all of those ideas of lack, all of those ideas of I'm not enough or I don't have enough. Look, you already have, if you have Jesus Christ, you have every thing you need because the father's delight is in Jesus and Jesus is in you. And so I just encourage you, let Amen. that resonate in your soul today. And maybe even if you got to jump up and skip around and have a little praise <laughs> bake, because you know what? That's some good truth. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. And I like what you said. We, we love our neighbors only as much as we love ourselves. Yeah. And I think we people have a hard time loving souls, loving the lost, loving the broken, the mm -hmm. hurting, because mm -hmm. they don't like Come themselves. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and I think about as, as we were talking that, or as you were saying a little bit earlier, a lot of times we will uh, funnel uh, our love the love God has for us through our earthly fathers mm -hmm. and there's somebody watching right now you didn't have a great father who uh, loved you just right and so you have problems letting God love you and today God wants to heal you mm -hmm. Come on. he wants you to forgive your father but also allow God to forgive to, to heal the hurt. They're not one and the same. Forgive him, he owes you nothing, but at the same time, allow God to heal you. And as you let him heal you, the relationship we have with him gets richer and richer, no matter what happens, knowing that God loves you. Yeah. Amen, yeah. amen. Well, look at verse eight in Psalm 16. It says, I have set the Lord always before me. That's a great goal, isn't it? <laughs> because he is at my right hand, I shall no, not be moved. There are so many times I just hold my right hand up <laughs> as close to me as I can. And I say, Lord, that's how close you are to me. He's your, he's my paracletos, the mm. one who come comes on, come on, alongside come of me. Yeah. He's your helper to help you, to walk you through life. You are never, ever, ever alone or yes, by yourself. Yes, yes. And point number two, that's it. He's as close to you as your right hand. Amen. And Pastor Gary, this is why the Holy Spirit is so important to us. Mm -hmm. You know, when you say he's as close to us, he's our, he's our helper, he's our strength, he's that one that we need. Whenever you call on Jesus, the Holy Spirit is there with you. If you've accepted Christ, it says, You've got that Holy Spirit, but the power of the Holy Spirit is in you. And you can, you know that no matter what you are facing, that his peace will rule your heart, Amen. his strength. He'll give you the strength. When you feel weak in yourself, he says, my, my grace is sufficient. My strength is made perfect mm -hmm. in your weakness. Yeah. So no matter what you are facing, you may feel like God is far away, but this verse says he is close. He is close to us. Right. We just have to see him. We 
we just have to recognize that he is there. And so many times we look at everything else going on in our lives that we push the vision of God out of our way. And we don't see that he is there in the midst of the circumstance. He is just as much there in your bad times, in the valleys, as he is in the good times on the mountaintops. He is just as much there in darkness as he is in light, as he is in death, as he is in life. He is there with us at all times. So no matter what you are facing today at this very moment, he is with you. He sees it. He knows it. You are not alone. He sees everything you are facing, every decision that you have to make, every decision that maybe your family member has to make that is difficult for them. He sees the trials that they're going through. And all you got to do is call on him. Amen. And he's right there to answer you. That's Amen. awesome to know that we have a God who is not far off, but he is right beside us yeah. every yeah. second yeah. of every day. Yeah. yeah. And I think of, as you put your hand up, that right hand, I think about how close God is to us. He is the God of hope. There are those of you who right now, you've been feeling hopeless in your situations and in your circumstances, those things that you can't change, but the God of hope is at your right hand. And it says that the God of hope will cause hope to abound in you. And we know that faith is the substance of what we hope for. Mm -hmm. Let God stir hope in you today. Let him, because he's at your right hand, Amen. waiting for you to just acknowledge him. He will do it for you. Amen. And you know, the, the crazy thing is, even if you're trying to push God further away from you, your right hand goes with you wherever you go. Mm -hmm. And so even if you extend your right hand as far away from you as possible, it just goes to show you God is never further than an arm's distance away. Mm -hmm. and, and I honestly believe, you know, because some of you are watching right now and you figure, well, okay, if God's with me, why are all of these things mm -hmm. just coming at me right now? I want you to think about this in a natural. If, if, if you're sitting there, you're, whether you're at home, you're, you're in the nursing home, you're in the hospital, you're in prison, you're, you're watching this on a mobile device in your car at a bus stop, wherever you're watching this right now, if something flew at you out of the blue, without even thinking, you're going to throw your hands up to protect you. Sometimes God will allow things to come at you because he wants to see you how involuntarily it is for him to come up and block that thing from getting to you. And so remember that when you're thinking about your right hand, when you're thinking about how near God is to you, you may think he's far away, but he's never more than an arm's distance, but he is always ready to jump up and protect you, to jump up and guard you and give you the strength mm -hmm. that you need. That's, that's one of the significant things in the scripture about the right hand. And it is the position of strength. God is seated at a position of strength in your life. That's why David was able to say, I will not be moved. So whatever you're facing, whatever's coming at you, know that God is at your right hand and continue to keep the Lord always and in all ways before you because he will protect you from whatever's coming your way. There's, there's someone watching. You were abandoned by your natural father. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you, you are really struggling believing that God is that near to you, that God mm -hmm. loves you and, and delights in you. Thank and you and, and I, I just want you to call that prayer partner because I believe, as Pastor Myra said, there's a deep healing that God has to do in your life. Mm -hmm. Going all the way back to your childhood. My God, my God. Just breaking off of you generational curses. Mm. We break that spirit of abandonment off of you today. Mm. And I just want you to just, just hold up your right hand for a moment. Mm. And just say... Yeah. Quote that scripture, Lord, you are as close to me as my right hand. Mm -hmm. And he is. Yes. He loves you. He delights in you. You are my, his my, my, excellent my, my, my. one. Mm. And he wants to set you free. You've been believing lies yeah. from the enemy for years now. And today is a day of freedom and deliverance, turnaround yes, for yes, you. Yes, yes, yes. Well, let's look at the last verse in chapter 16. 
It says, you will show me the path of life mm. and in your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. And I just My want God. to encourage you. Number three and finally, stay in his presence. Yes. In his presence, it makes mm -hmm. such a mm -hmm. difference yeah. mm -hmm. when you get into that atmosphere. Yes. Yes. You know, yes. Pastor Gary, there have been so many times when I've been struggling with things in my own life personally, and I've tried to deal with it on my own, but that moment that I just say, okay, God, I've got to bring you into this situation. I've got to allow you to come in, because we have that choice. We can say, God, I don't want you involved, and we try to do it on our own, and we can invite him. But whenever I've invited him in those moments, Man, that burden just lifts, his peace comes in, and we experience the pleasures that are at his right hand forevermore. I wanna encourage you today, if that is where you are saying, okay, I'm struggling with this thing, invite Christ in, invite the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit to come and make a difference in your life because he will. And stay there, stay in his presence, mm -hmm. don't get out of it. Once, once you experience God, once you experience being in his presence, there is nothing like it. And you're gonna want to keep going back and getting more and getting more. It's kind of, it's better than an addiction, it is. <laughs> I don't, I hate using those carnal words, but it's better than that because man, when you get the fullness of Christ in you, when you get his Holy Spirit working in your life, you know that no matter what you are facing, no matter what discouragement tries to come, you have that shield of faith that rises up because you are a believer and you have on the armor of God that says, it doesn't matter what comes my direction. I know the God that I serve and I know that his presence is with me. And I know that as I stay here and as I commune with him, as I have that relationship with him, what was it Moses said? You know, I don't want to go anywhere right. unless your presence goes that's with right. me, Lord. That's, right. that's where I want to be in my life. God, I don't want to go anywhere. Unless, and I pray that's your prayer today. God, I don't want to make another step. I don't want to make another move mm -hmm. without your presence. We live in a world that we Jesus. need the presence of Jesus. Mm -hmm. We need the power of the Holy Spirit leading and directing our lives. Because if we don't have it, we are going to feel hopeless. Like you yeah. said, Pastor Myra, yeah. we're gonna yeah. feel hopeless. So we need to stay in his presence, immersed in his yeah. presence at all yeah. times. I was thinking about that same chapter. As you were reading mm -hmm. uh, that passage, I thought about how God told Moses, yeah. there's a place by me yes. and I will hide you there in the cleft of the Amen. rock. And I think about in the secret place of the yes. most high God, if we just abide there, there's nothing like it as you were saying. God wants you to live there with him in his presence, fullness of joy, right. not happiness that based on, on the things That's that happen right. around us, but that state of joy. God wants you to, to be in his presence because their fullness <laughs> of joy, there's no greater joy yeah. than in his presence. Amen, and you know, there's a reality that you can be in his presence and your circumstances right. keep you from being un, keep you from being aware that you're in his presence. I think of Cleopas and his friend right after the resurrection of Jesus. Mm -hmm. they're, on their way back out of town and Jesus pulls up next to them. They're walking, of course, and here they are walking, talking in the presence of the resurrected Lord himself. But because their eyes had been so blinded from the circumstances that they had just went through, they, they, they said, did you, haven't you heard? Mm -hmm. Don't you know what just happened? Can I tell you something? Jesus knows everything that happened. And maybe you are that person that's watching right now that's been abandoned by your father, mistreated by your mother. You've gone through different circumstances. Choices in your own life have run you through the muck. Jesus knows, but he shows up right at your right hand and he says, will you walk with me? Will you allow your circumstances to melt so that you can experience the joy of my presence? And at the moment, the Bible says there in Luke, when they realized who it was, Jesus, Jesus vanished from their midst. Then they said to one another, didn't our hearts burn mm -hmm. 
as we walked and talked with him along the way. Right now, some of your hearts are burning because you're sensing the presence of God. Mm -hmm. And you know that it's time to fully enter into that presence and to, and to welcome that presence into your own life. And shortly, we're, we're going to give you an opportunity to do that. But right now, I want you to just enjoy that presence. Let the presence of Jesus Christ, let the fullness of his joy begin to eradicate everything that's happened to you everything that didn't happen to you, all your disappointments, all your, your unmet expectations right now. You know, there's so many things, so many things that so many people go through and the enemy just uses them to block them from seeing the presence of God. But right now, the fullness of his joy is just washing over you so that you can experience that fullness, that peace as he walks alongside of you. Oh, it's such a great thing, Pastor Gary. It is. So how do you stay in his presence? Well, it says that God inhabits, he lives mm. and dwells in the praises of his people. <laughs> Number one, go to church, get under that corporate anointing. Yes. Number two, <laughs> turn on Christian television yeah. where you can hear Christian music. Turn on Christian radio, mm -hmm. you know, play a Christian music if you're in a if you're in a hospital or a nursing home or if you're in jail, get access to some Christian music. <laughs> sing, <laughs> sing mm -hmm. praises to mm. the Lord. Don't let the enemy steal That's your right. song. Right. Or another way to just stay in his presence is just listen to Pastor Rebecca. <laughs> As she sings for us, <laughs> we need a miracle. <laughs> You're the same God today And the same God tomorrow Help me see the victory You already see Let my faith be today What it will be tomorrow When I see the victory You already see
Oh, if you've just joined us, you are watching Move Your Mountain. And remember, we're going to take communion in just a few moments. We want you to make sure you have your elements, a cracker, a piece of bread, some juice in a cup. So many of you tell us how you love to just take Holy Communion with us on Move Your Mountain every week. We've been looking at Psalm 16 together. I encourage you to just delve into it. It is so rich and so revelatory. Mm -hmm. Jesus says that, or the God says that he, he delights in you. Think about that. You're his excellent one. Mm. And I want you just to get that healthy image, that mm -hmm. right yeah. image of your heavenly father. And if you haven't believed that, if you think mm -hmm. either God's mad at you or you're not worthy enough or somehow you've messed up too much, mm -hmm. you need to just ask the Lord to set you free. Mm -hmm. Pastor Meyer, I know that's a prayer God wants to answer. Absolutely, to be free. There's nothing like being free in Him. God wants you to be free. Jesus said, I came that they might have life mm -hmm. and that they might have it more abundantly. God wants your life to be abundant. Yes. So if you are living beneath your privilege, God is calling you today to allow him to move that mountain out of your life, uh -huh. to move it out of the way so that you can be totally free and enjoy what Jesus did at the cross. We're going to commemorate that. I love taking communion also when we come together because it causes me to remember. Yeah. God wants us to remember what he wants to do for you. Yeah, yeah, and it's very easy to remember what has happened to you. It's very easy to sure. remember negative things. But right now, mm -hmm. as you're watching this program, I want you to take a moment and I want you to think back to the time when you gave your life to Jesus. I want you to consider the circumstances that you may have been in. I want you to think of what it felt like as his, as his spirit entered your heart and, your, and, and you were born again. I want you to think of that moment. I want you to, to treasure that moment because for some of you, it's, it's been a long time since you've thought back to that moment and the, and the devil has come and he's just piled tragedy on top of tragedy, disappointment on top of disappointment. And, and God is wanting you right now to remember back to that time when you gave your life to him, when you realized you were his, you realized you were loved, you realized you were accepted, you realized that there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ. And, and you felt freer than you've ever been. You, you may have cried, you may have shaken, you may have wept, you may have shouted for joy, you may have just sat in humble, thanksgiving. Now, if you don't have that moment in your life, some of you right now, you're watching and you're searching. When, when was that moment? I, I don't know if that moment ever happened. Well, you know what? Let's make right now your moment. Let's make today watching Move Your Mountain be the moment when you've experienced for the first time the fullness of the joy of the full presence of God alive inside of you Say, how do I get there? What do I do? Well, it's as simple as this. You first have to acknowledge that <laughs> you're a sinner. What does that mean? You're a bad person? No, it means you're far from God. The gradations of sin, whether it's murder or little white lie, all of them, just the smallest bit is enough to have you sent into the lake of fire when you die. But you know what? The act of Jesus Christ on the cross is more than enough to wash away all of the sins, no matter how many or how bad. But you have to say, I'm far from God. I'm a sinner. I, 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 I am in desperate need to be brought back into right relationship. And then you, you understand that the only way to be brought back into right relationship with the Father is through the Son, Jesus, who came, lived that sinless life that none of us could live, died the death that all of us deserved and then rose again from the grave to, to prove as a testimony to the world he is who he says he is, the Lord and Savior of the universe. And, and you accept Jesus as 
your Lord and your Savior. You say, I put my faith, I put my belief, not in my own efforts, not in what I did do or what I can't do, but in what he's already done. I put my faith in the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. I put my faith in his resurrection from the dead. I put my faith in him as Lord and Savior. And I turn from my sinful life and turn and receive his holy life. And if you do that, today's your day. And so right now, as you begin to turn your heart to the Lord, I just invite you to just pray a prayer. You can pray with me in your heart or you can pray the words that I pray and just say, Lord Jesus, I thank you today that you are who you said you were, the Lord and Savior of the universe. And for the first time, I, I give my life to you. I acknowledge my sinfulness. I acknowledge my desperate need and my distance from the Father. And I turn to you to bring me near to him now. I put my faith and hope and trust in you as God and Savior. And I surrender my life to you. I surrender to your Lordship. I turn from my sin and I yield to your Lordship right now, God. And I thank you today for seeing something in me worth dying for. And I thank you today for giving me the opportunity to rise again with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. And Pastor Rebecca, we talked about how the Lord's as close to us as our right hand and in his presence. His presence is not a feeling, right. it's a fact, it's the yeah. truth. That's and wow. we need to grasp a hold of that because many times when you're feeling down, you're saying, well, God's not near me. He's mm. not around me. Or when you're feeling like you've been neglected, you're saying God's not with me. But when you feel those goosebumps on a Sunday morning of worship, <laughs> oh, he's right there. No, God is with you at all times. His presence is with you at all times. No matter if you feel it or you don't feel it, it is there with you right now where you are. You can't, you can't escape from it. Psalmist David said in Psalm 139, whether I make my bed in hell or I go to the highest heavens, Lord, you are there. He is there at all times with you. Recognize him. We need to understand that and recognize that his presence is not leaving us. We can turn our back on him, but he's not going to leave us. Well, we're going to take Holy Communion. If you have your elements, would you get them now? Let's pray over them. The Bible says, examine your own heart. And Lord, it was on the night that you were soon about to be betrayed. You had us on your mind. And you took bread, you blessed it and broke it. For this, your body was broken for us. For you were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was on you, Lord. And with and by your stripes we were and we are the healed. And as you take that cracker, that wafer, that piece of bread, eat of it now and be healed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Pastor Breyer, would you pray over the cup? Thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the blood. We thank you. Yes. We remember now the blood that takes away. It was shed for the remission of our sins. We thank you. God, we thank you for giving your only begotten Son because we believe that you've accepted us in the beloved. So we say thank you for the blood. We say thank you because you didn't have to do it, but you did and we give you glory for it. We give you all the honor for it. in Jesus name. All right, take your cup now and drink and be washed and cleansed by the blood of the lamb. Well, the Bible says sin separates us from God. Mm -hmm. And when we've confessed our sins, talk about a great time to experience his presence. It's right now. Amen, amen. And just receive it right now. Just receive it. Remember, it's, I love how Pastor Gary said, it's not a feeling, mm -hmm. it's a fact. So whether you're experiencing something physically or not, I want you to mentally apprehend the reality, the mm -hmm. fact 
that his presence is with you right now. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm sitting here with Pastor Meyer, Pastor Gary, Pastor Rebecca. They could all turn their back on me. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't see me anymore. But that didn't mean that I went anywhere. In the same way Pastor Rebecca said, we can turn our back on God, but that doesn't mean that he went anywhere. So just receive the goodness of his presence right now. Let it well up inside of you and take the fullness of joy that inhabits it because his delight is in you. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you are blessed by programs like Move Your Mountain, you know, we need your partnership to be able to continue to bring these programs to you. I don't want you to ever take for granted that you're gonna turn on your TV and we're always gonna be there. We've been here for the last 44 years Every day, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. We're not commercially underwritten. So we need partners that will invest. Whenever God gave Norma, our founder, the vision for this ministry, she said, Lord, where am I going to get all the money? And the Lord said, I will give you partners that have the money. And if you've never given to Cornerstone Television, or maybe it's been a while, I'd like to invite you to come home. You could do a one-time gift or a monthly gift. Pray about it. Let me give you our address. It's Cornerstone Television Network, CTVN. We're at 1 Signal Hill Drive. We're in Wall, Pennsylvania. 15148-1499. And as you sow, I want you to know that Cornerstone Television is good ground and fertile soil. And we thank you so much for your gift. Well, we're going to go now to Pastor Rebecca. As we head over to the altar, she's going to sing for us, Holy Spirit.
the Holy Spirit goes where he's invited. Amen. And we invite him here. I pray that you are inviting him into your life, into your homes, into the situations that you are facing because he is in the midst today. Yeah. yeah. Speak life today. Speak life. Come on. Speak life, no matter what's going on. Speak life into your circumstances, into your situations, because our God is right there at our right hand, waiting just to move on your behalf. Speak life over your children. Yeah. There it is. Amen. There it is. Speak That's life right. over your children. That's right. Yeah. And you know, the, the reality of it is you might not see life, what you're speaking life over, mm -hmm. but that's what faith is. It's the substance of things hoped for and the certainty of what we don't see. And so when you speak mm -hmm. life, I, as you were saying that, Pastor Myra, I, I thought of the parable Jesus says in Luke 18, where he, say, he ends it by saying, but when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Yeah. This is the faith that I believe he's looking for, not yeah. just faith in him. Yeah. He's looking for that. But he knows those who are his. But I believe he's looking for those who are his, his excellent ones, his saints, yeah, yes, to yes. speak life, to, to move and to operate in yeah. faith and to unite your faith together with, with other believers so that yeah. you can see yeah. breakthrough in your life. Yes, yes. Well, as you can see, this altar is filled with many of you that have called in, many of you that have written in. Right. Mm -hmm. And even if you haven't had a chance, that's all right. There's no distance mm -mm, in the God. spirit. We nope. say that all the time because it's true. So just join mm -mm. your faith right now. It's faith that pleases God. Yes. Yes. We're going to pray yes. as you agree with us. Pastor Meyer, would you begin for us? Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for the privilege and the honor to come boldly to the throne of grace, to get help, to find mercy in our time of need. And so we lift up every single mm. prayer request we lift up everyone who has anything that they need. Mm -hmm. And Father, we call it yeah. done yes. in the name of Jesus. By faith, okay. calling it done yes. because your word has yes. said Jesus. it is so. And so we say thank you. Mm. We say thank you. Jesus. Amen. Would you slip Amen. over to the piano and just lead us in some worship, please? Father, we just thank you so much you, for who you are. You are a mighty God. So you are the only one who is able to see every one of these needs and be able to do something about them. And so, God, that's why we come to you today, because you are all-sufficient, God. You are all-powerful, God. And we recognize that in our lives. Those that are watching, they recognize that in their lives, Lord God. That's why they've called in. That's why they've written in. And so, God, we bring these requests before you, God. Those that are desiring to have children that the doctors have told, no, you can't have children, God. Those are some of the prayer requests yes. that are laid out before you right now, God. Those that are feeling fear and anxiety, they don't know what tomorrow's going to hold for them, and so they're fearful of that. That is the needs that are here today, God. And Lord, I thank you that you break every fear. You break every anxious thought, Lord Jesus. I pray that you would give those that are dealing with anxiety right now the ability to capture every thought that comes against the knowledge of who you are in their lives, God. That you would just help them to capture those thoughts and let them be reminded today of who who they are in you, that you are their protector, you are their sustainer, you are their provider, Lord Jesus. God, I pray that today that they would see your miraculous touch of healing, of deliverance, Lord, of freedom, Lord, intervening in every one of these needs and every one of these lives that are represented here today, God. You do your powerful and mighty work, and we will thank you and praise you for it in Jesus' name. Oh, God, and we thank you today that we are your saints. We rejoice today that those who are in Christ are a new creation. And God, we thank you right now that, that as our faith builds and as, our, as our, our, our desire for your presence increases, that your joy will increase in our lives. And so God, I pray right now in Jesus' mighty name for every body that is experiencing discomfort, that right now the comforter himself, the Holy Spirit would come and bring comfort and peace in into those bodies. I pray for those who are experiencing tremors right now, Lord God, whether it's from medication, whether it's from age, whether it's from nerve disorders, we speak healing right now in Jesus' mighty name. We speak to, to wombs right now to, to, to be opened and to bear 
children. We, we call upon life to spring forth in families who are praying and believing for babies, in couples who are trying, oh God, to bring forth life, Lord God. We pray right now and we release your anointing upon them yes. to be fruitful yes. and multiply to fill the earth and subdue it and to have dominion because that is both your first blessing upon mankind and your first command. And we thank you, God, that we get to experience your presence. We get to experience your nearness. We get to experience your joy because, God, you are at our right hand and we are at yours. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we hope you were blessed and encouraged by today's program. Pastor Meyer is just going to lead us in a time of worship. Stay in his presence. I surrender to you everything I give to you with hope Stone Television exists to spread the good news through Bible-based programs and a fully staffed prayer line. Through CTVN, lives are saved, hearts, minds, and bodies are healed, and Jesus is lifted high. We can't do this work without you. Would you consider sending a gift this month to keep the gospel moving forward with power? When you give, we'll send you Listen, Love, Repeat, which presents scriptural examples of those who lived alert, including Jesus, who noticed those who least expected to be seen, gives creative ideas for showing love to friends and family, suggests practical ways to reach out to the lonely, marginalized outcast, helps you comfort the grieving, and so much more. Ask for your copy of Listen, Love, Repeat when you give today. Call 888-665-4483 or go to ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for your generosity. Hope happens here.